TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Incumbent Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu's pre-trial hearings vis-a-vis -vis allegations of bribery, fraud and breach of trust kicked off this morning in the Attorney General's office in Jerusalem. Russian President Vladimir Putin met with his Iranian counterpart Hassan Rouhani to discuss the 2015 multilateral nuclear agreement, among other regional topics, at the sidelines of the Supreme Eurasian Economic Council meeting that is being held in the Armenian capital Yerevan. Iranian Energy Minister Bijan Amdal Zanganeh blames Saudi Arabia for their deteriorating bilateral relations, insisting that all Muslim countries in the region should view Iran as a peaceful neighbor. Incumbent Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu's pre-trial hearings vis-à-vis -vis allegations of bribery, fraud and breach of trust kicked off this morning in the Attorney General's office in Jerusalem. During the series of proceedings, which will last for at least four days, the longtime Israeli leader's legal team is trying to persuade the Attorney General Avichai Mendelblit and State Attorney Shai Nitzan to drop some, if not all of the charges Netanyahu currently faces, including three counts of fraud, three counts of breach of trust and one count of bribery in connection to three separate investigations. Today's hearings focused on what is perceived as the most complex case, dubbed 4000, in which Prime Minister Netanyahu allegedly exploited his power between the years 2012 and 2017 to benefit businessman Shaul Elovich in exchange for favorable coverage on one of Israel's most popular websites, Walla News. Due to the complexity of Case 4000, the Attorney General devoted two days for its hearing to allow Netanyahu's legal representatives enough time to present their arguments. After a two-day break on Friday and Saturday, the pre-trial hearings will resume on Sunday next week, when Netanyahu's lawyers will present their arguments in Cases 1000 and 2000. In Case 1000, the Prime Minister's representatives will have to provide counter-arguments to allegations of fraud and breach of trust, in which Netanyahu and his wife Sarah are suspected of accepting illicit gifts valued at some $195,000 in exchange for favors from prominent Israeli Hollywood producer Alnon Milchan and $75,000 worth of presents from Australian billionaire business mogul James Packer. The next day on Monday, the hearing of Case 2000 will ensue, which also focuses on allegations of fraud and breach of trust, in which Netanyahu is alleged to have discussed a wrongful quid pro quo arrangement with Arnon Moses, who is the publisher of one of Israel's best-selling dailies, Yadiot Achronot. Prosecutors have reportedly obtained copies of recorded conversations in which the Prime Minister sought to attain improved media coverage in exchange for his efforts to weaken and limit circulation of Yediot's Israel Hayom competitor, including the proposed passing of legislation. Meanwhile, Netanyahu's legal representatives voiced confidence in Israel's legal system, and more so in their expected exoneration of the longest-serving Prime Minister in Israel's history. אני מייחס חשיבות רבה להליכי השימוע ועל יסוד תוצרי החקירות והחומרים הרצויים, המצויים ברשותי וברשות צוות ההגנה, אני סבור שקיים בסיס מוצק לשנות את פני הדברים כפי שהם עולים מכתב החשדות. אנחנו הולכים לבוא ולהציג גם את הראיות שכולם מכירים וגם ראיות חדשות. אנחנו בטוחים שכשנסיים להציג את הדברים שלנו לא יהיה מנוס מלסגור את התיק. אנחנו מאמינים בהליך השימוע, אנחנו לא מדברים על עסקה, אנחנו מאמינים ויודעים שבסופו של יום שלושת התיקים האלו חייבים וצריכים להיסגר. It is important to mention that a decision to indict Netanyahu in a bribery charge will remove the cloud of ambiguity and will compel political figures to make a final decision as to whether they are willing to be in a government in which he serves as prime minister. Legally, Netanyahu can remain a premier until convicted by two courts of law. That said, a final decision to charge him with bribery could end up being discussed by the Supreme Court, which would address the legitimacy of him serving after such a charge and could also undermine public support for him, particularly given the growing prospects of a looming third election amid continued political deadlock. In related news, Blue and White Chairman and former IDF Chief of Staff Benny Gantz called off today's scheduled meeting with incumbent Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu. 
A blue and white spokesperson explained the decision to TV7, saying, At this stage, the preconditions upon which any further meetings between the negotiating teams may take place have not been met, an unfortunate development that forced the party to cancel today's meeting. The blue and white spokesperson noted, however, that when deemed appropriate and necessary, an additional meeting will be scheduled for this or next week. The spokesperson stated further that under these circumstances, there is naturally no reason to hold a meeting between the two party heads, Lieutenant General and Reserve Benny Gantz and Prime Minister B. Minetonyao. In response, the Likud issued a statement in which the party asserted that it was done by Blue and White's decision to derail the negotiations. The Likud accused Blue and White No. 2, Yair Lapid, of being responsible for this development, asserting that he was unwilling to accept an alternating premiership arrangement between Netanyahu and Gantz. Now to a regional matter. Russian President Vladimir Putin held a meeting today with his Iranian counterpart, Hassan Rouhani, at the sidelines of the Supreme Eurasian Economic Council meeting that is being held in the Armenian capital, Yerevan. Я с удовлетворением констатирую, что идет совместная работа по присоединению Ирана к работе Евразийского экономического союза. Уверен, что эта работа пойдет на пользу нашим странам. President Putin noted that their meeting, which was held behind closed doors, will focus on the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, which is the technical term for the 2015 multilateral nuclear agreement, as well as the situation in the Middle East region in general. Поговорим о двухсторонних вопросах и по СВПД, и по ситуации в регионе, в том числе в Сирийской Арабской Республике. На этот раз в Ереване. President Rouhani is seemingly trying to persuade Moscow to take a more active role in diffusing tensions across the Middle East in what appears to be repeated efforts by the Ayatollah regime to deter military action against it by the United States. As such, the Iranian leader claimed that both Russia and the Islamic Republic are located in the sensitive region and warned of continued instability in light of what he termed as negative manifestations. Meanwhile in Moscow, Iranian energy minister Bijan Amdal Zangane blamed Saudi Arabia for their deteriorating bilateral relations in a statement that kept Tehran's top energy official in line with the Islamic Republic's denial of any involvement in the attack on Riyadh's oil facilities that occurred on the 14th of September. Uh, this relationship, this difficulty between Iran and Saudi Arabia hasn't created from the Iranian side. Saudi Arabia, the United States and European Union have blamed Tehran for the attack, which temporarily knocked out more than 5% of global oil production. The Islamic Republic vehemently denies these allegations, however, and instead, its Houthi proxy in Yemen claimed full responsibility for the attack. In efforts to convince Iran's innocence, the energy minister of the Islamic Republic insisted that all Muslim countries in the region should view Iran as a peaceful neighbor, as the Islamic Republic views another country that is foreign to the region as its enemy, in a believed reference to the United States. Uh, all the Muslim countries, all the neighbor countries should have the peaceful environment between themselves and anyone in out of Iran doesn't think that I believe that Iran is their enemies. Our enemy is another country out of this area. Thank you for watching us. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.